thank you for coming and joining us uh, this evening's webinar. We're talking about one software to rule them all. So um, it's a nice geeky name. If you get it, even better. Uh, we like you for that. Uh, but the reason we're talking about this today is because we have one piece of software that can all connect together and you can use it for embroidery, you can use it for rhinestones, you can use it for spangles, you can use it for vinyl, you can use it for doing applique and a bunch of other stuff in between that we probably haven't even thought of yet. But it's just really cool that this one piece of software can connect everything where you can take one piece of artwork and convert that piece of artwork into stitches, convert it into an applique, convert it into something that you're going to send to your cutter, convert it into rhinestones, convert it into spangles, convert it to create hotfix templates like for your brush and bake type of system. So there's so many cool things you can do where all you have to do is learn one piece of software and it does everything for you. In addition to all these other cool features like help you organize your designs, and help to give your customers previews of what they're gonna what they're going to get made for them by you you know they're apparel decorators so it's a great professional grade piece of software so one one thing i want to talk about though we're looking at this page right here hopefully everyone can see okay uh hey dean uh dean said the voice is muffled a bit i will uh, try to make some mic adjustments if anyone else is having issues let me know but on my end, it's showing that everything is crystal clear and fine. Um, so a couple things just to refer to in regards to the webinar, okay? Uh, for one, look at this page that we're on right now, okay? We're on colemanandcompany.com. All right, so if you're on colemanandcompany.com and you click right here on design software, that's going to take you to the software pages. And it's also, it's going to have two things in the bottom, all right? And this is one thing I want to be very clear about. Oh, two things, okay, that I have to mention. One, if you are here to learn about training on this software, or you want to know how to digitize, or you want to know how to use Stitch Era Liberty, or how to make rhinestone transfers, or any of those things, if you came here for that, I would just politely say you're not going to get that here. This is a demonstration type of webinar. So we're just going to show you everything the software can do. We're not going to show you how it works. We're going to kind of go pretty quickly through things. It's just going to be of what does this software do and how does it all work together. If you do need some help learning the basics of these software, then go to colemanandcompany.com and click on design software and scroll to the bottom and you'll see the hotfix version on the left and you'll see the stitch error version on the right and you can watch those and it will teach you what you want to learn about the software. If you're here to find out about the software then you are in the right place because that's what we're going to do today. Okay? Oh, hold on a minute. Uh, Alright, I, I would like to know right now if audio has improved because I just made some, I was making some adjustments while I was talking. Okay, sweet. Um, I can I can also walk and chew gum at the same time. There's a lot of things I can do at the same time. Uh, one is adjust audio and explain how a webinar works. <laughs> All right, so uh, now that we're kind of cleared up everywhere, thank you everybody for your participation and your honesty and letting me know it wasn't uh, perfect. But the next thing um, is your internet connection is really important for this webinar. We're going to be looking at screen a screen share. And if it's fuzzy on your end, you're not going to get to see as clear as you would like to. So turn off your Netflix, turn off your uh, Facebook, turn off any streaming music. If somebody around you does not need to have uh, something running or going on at the same time as you, you know, maybe politely ask them to turn it off, especially if your connection is not ideal. If you've got really fast internet, you're probably not even going to know what I'm talking about. If your internet's a little bit slower, you are going to see that. Also, if you're on a tablet and you have a laptop or a desktop available, you're probably going to get better internet connection and better uh, view out of that. That's just what I've seen and experienced, so I recommend that as well. Now let's just go ahead and talk about a couple quick things and move forward. Um, uh, my name is Mark Vila, by the way, and I'm with Coleman and Company. So we are here uh, for you and your apparel decorating business if you don't know about us already. So we sell everything from uh, all the supplies for embroidery and rhinestones and spangles. And we sell heat presses and other additions like cutters uh, and software for your business. We also try to do this type of stuff where we teach you about uh, what your thing, what your software can do, like those videos I showed you before, and we also just tell you 
uh, different things you might want to add on to your business or better ways to grow your business if you're trying to increase your efficiency or just upgrade from where you are, especially as your business grows, you want to get better and hopefully we can point you in the right direction. Today is about software. Um, so as I mentioned before, click on design software and you can see that stuff just to reiterate that. A few other things you can watch and listen to. Uh, for one, if you click on watch up here on the top of the Coleman & Company website, it's going to take you to uh, right to our Coleman & Company and Coldesi page. We've got a whole bunch of playlists and videos. We've got tons and tons of stuff. We have hundreds of videos on here and our videos are watched by you know thousands of hours. So there's a lot of great information. Check it out. You're going to find a lot of cool information if you're looking to learn about us and the company and things we do. The, the next thing to consider is click on listen. If you click on listen, that's going to take you to our podcast. Podcast is myself and a gentleman named Mark Stevenson, and we have various guests. And we talk about all different types of things about growing your business. If you are having some trouble growing your business, if you don't think you're making enough money, if you want to achieve better success than you have right now, um, or you're brand new, then listen to this. This is a free resource. It's 30, 30, 35 hours worth of content talking about beating your competition, how to be different, things that'll kill your business, you know, choosing the right equipment, how to make more money using email, you versus the competition, and overcoming objections. This is a, I mean, not just because I'm the one talking in it, which obviously you could probably figure I like to talk, but beyond that, it is good because we spend a lot of time putting it together and we consult a lot of different people in putting the content together. So it's not just about the opinions of a couple people or one company, but it's opinions of various companies and people not even outside of our building. So um, hopefully this is some really good information to help you grow your business. And I recommend you listen. You can find it on iTunes as well or just listen to it right on that page. Uh, next is learn. If you click on that, that'll take you to our blog. There's a various articles on there that can help you out. If you click on connect, it takes you to Facebook. And if you click on save, it'll let you sign up for an email list where we drop some random coupons on occasion. So without further ado, we should get into the software demonstration. Thanks everybody for listening. Uh, Alan is going to join us right now. And uh, I fixed the microphone so you can actually grab that one and everything should be fine now. Um, but Alan's going to just, uh, I guess in a nutshell, Show us all the cool things that this software can do and some cool things I didn't even know it can do. So I'm going to pass the, the uh, control over to Al, uh, Alan and he's going to probably spend maybe 20 minutes or so just kind of chatting about the software and I bet I'll, I'm going to learn something new too. Okay, I want you to think about some questions you may have uh, based upon the software if you have any questions. Again, uh, this is not a training seminar. There's not enough time in an hour-long seminar to show you all the ins and outs about what the software uh, is uh, able to do, uh, but also how to use it. You will get fully trained if you do decide to go with our software. You get full, um, full support, full, uh, uh, full ability to, uh, let me see, mic not working. You don't, you don't hear me, Vince? Oh, okay, just lift it up a bit. Hold on one second. How about now? How about, how about now, guys? Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Good. Excellent. 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 Okay. We actually, um, not that you can hear me that great. <laughs> uh, let me turn on my mic just to. We just got a brand new uh, system here, just uh, not that long ago. So we have a particularly high tech uh, system now, and we're just getting used to it. So thanks for bearing with us. But it should be good now. Just holler if you have any issues. But it should be good now. Okay, now the way that the software works is basically you, uh, there's only four steps that you must employ every single time, whether you're creating embroidery, whether you're creating uh, rhinestone, spangle, whether you're actually going to create, actually creating vinyl is even simple. Um, hold on one second. Yeah, my voice is low again. Let me see. Okay, hold on one second, guys. I'm going to switch mics out. You guys should be hearing me now. I'm on this other mic. I think the batteries are probably low on the other one. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay, guys. All right, so like I was mentioning, there's four steps to actually using the software. 
Okay, whether you're creating rhinestone designs, whether you're creating spangle, whether you're going to create uh, embroidery, uh, when creating um, a vinyl is actually a, uh, actually a simple process. Now, one of the questions I do get is, do I need any accompanying software to use this software? No, you do not need CorelDRAW. You do not need Adobe Illustrator. Built within the software is actually its own graphic user interface. So. You can actually edit graphics, convert graphics to vectors for vinyl, and uh, it's a one-stop shop. So I'm just going to go through the four steps in how to use the software. And um, the first, first thing I want to introduce you to is actually the working screen. This is your normal working screen here. And what we have is what's called, it's kind of set up like Microsoft Works, um, where we have what's called ribbon technology. Every time we go into uh, Submenu group, the ribbon changes to things that are appropriate to that submenu group. We go into hotfix, we can actually draw in rhinestones in several different, ma several different manners. And then we have a view tab. So it makes it easier uh, because most softwares, when you go into a submenu group, opens up a new window. And we can organize our views right here and work within this one, uh, this one window. Now, the types of formats you could bring in, in any kind of graphic, we'll go to the artwork tab, and you could bring in any rasterized images. Now, the rasterized images are images that are, you're used to seeing on the internet. They are JPEGs, bitmaps, paintbrush images, GIFs, target images, clipboard, and PNG graphics, okay? These are your most standard graphics that you will find anywhere. Uh, uh, and, and probably the most num the number one type of graphic you'll receive from clients. You also have vectors, okay? Now vectors are actually a different type of file format. We'll talk about that a little bit. But you have uh, the formats that you have is WMF, EMF, CDRs, which is a Corel Draw image, Corel Presentation Exchange, Adobe Illustrator, DXF for those people that are actually using plotter cutters and plotter files if you actually do brush and bake, okay? You can actually bring them in here too with the appropriate add-on to the software, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Question we got here from Carlos is, does the software work with print and cutter like the Roland 300? The Roland 300, uh, if you go to this website, if you have a pen, just write this website actually, down. I have something for them. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you guys should be able to hear me fine. I got this one up here. Um, but uh, if you click, if you click on the blog portion right on the top where I showed you at ColemanandCompany.com, if you click on blog, the very first article, uh, learn. I'm sorry, click on learn on the top, a little higher. There you go, left, learn. That's going to take you to our blog. Can your cutter make rhinestone templates? It's also answering all the same questions you're asking. If you click on that article, it actually sends you um, no, the one next to it right here. Oh, sorry. Yep. Can you make templates? That's the same for anything. That's the most common question. Um, but right here, this talks about compatible ones. And also up top, there's two options for actually testing your cutter plotter uh, with this software. So there's a test program and a test file. Check it out and follow the instructions right there. Okay, thank you. All right, so can files also be saved in EPS format? EPS formats is encapsulated postscripts is an archaic form of, of uh, vectoring software, and you cannot bring EPS files in here. Matter of fact, it's not even uh, shown as a format. Most encapsulated postscript file formats will actually be easily imported into CorelDRAW or Adobe Illustrator and resaved as one of these other files, WMF, EMF, CDRs, AI files, and then you could bring it in. EPS files, I know people that actually will buy CD-ROMs with full of vectors, and they always come in EPS because they're a little bit easier to compile. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, uh, those, those type of formats are archaic and not really found on most uh, digitizing software that you'll find in the market today. And most new, like if you go to Adobe Stock mm -hmm. and iStock, most of these new, the vector formats you're going to get into, a lot of them you actually will get direct AI files um, or Corel Draw files. That's correct. Like that. It's recommended whenever possible try to do that. And, and if you are trapped in EPS world, okay, there are some shareware uh, softwares you can actually download for free. Um, and that'll actually re uh, convert an EPS file to any other vectoring format as well. Vector Magic being one of them, okay? You can actually go there, upload it, and just resave it as a different format and then use it within the software, okay? 
All right, thank you for those questions. What about SVG? SVG files are actually vector, uh, um, the, uh, the scalable vector graphics. Again, that's not in here to you. You will have to resave those as a format of WMF, EMF, CDR, CMX, AI, DXFs, and PLTs. These are the formats that you will need, and they're, the, they're one of the most standard uh, Windows vectoring formats you can get. Again, with the SVGs, there are some, they're the same shareware programs can also convert those SVGs without manipulating the artwork into a different format that could be easily understood by other software. Okay? So, okay, so great questions, by the way. All right, now the, the four steps that we need to use uh, to actually create, we're going to do embroidery digitizing first, okay? And I'll show you some of the tools that we have. Now, we are going to just choose on our sidebar, we have images, okay? By the way, you do have sidebar information. Designs actually allows you to bring up designs from a specific folder. It allows you to preview those folders in the designs section here, okay? And then you can just drag and drop these right in. Okay, then you have images, which is a sidebar information where you can actually bring in a graphic. It's a drag and drop type of thing. And with all kind of JPEGs, you always do have a white background image to it. Okay, now the step number one is already accomplished. Number one, we needed a graphic and it needed to fit one of those formats that we discussed. The second step is we need to edit this graphic to the base, to what our customer intends. Okay, this is a pink ribbon, so I would imagine this is going to go on a cancer society or something of that, of that nature. So they're going to want it at a specific size, okay? So let's say they want this for a uh, bag, and the, the design is supposed to be six and a half inches, okay? If we look at this image, you can see the bounding box, okay? You see this gray box with all nine points uh, selecting it is touching our image, okay? That, that this, can, this is a canvas, and this is the actual image. So our canvas is touching the image. So all we need to do is go to, like, layout, which is similar to the page layout that you'll find in most desktop publishing software. And over here is my sizing, okay? So if I need this to be six and a half inches tall, I type in 6.50, and now the image is gonna be six and a half inches tall, okay? In some graphics, you'll find that the, uh, the canvas size does not actually touch. So let me just pull uh, these sunglasses in, okay? If I zoom into these sunglasses, you can see the bounding box is a little bit distant from the, uh, from the actual graphic image, both on the top, bottom, and both left and right. Now, if we were to just change the size numbers in here in layout, of course, the canvas is resized and not the graphic, which is the glasses. So in this situation, you, this, this software does have a tool called Set Size, and it allows me to draw a line from one end to the other, just put my left mouse button. Once I release, what I measured will be highlighted. And if I need this to be three and a half inches, I type in 3.5. And now the sunglasses here are three and a half inches. We can prove that by going to view, go into the measuring tool, and again, just drawing a line across and reading what the size is. So you can see there's our three and a half inches, okay? So step number, step number one is getting the graphic. Step number two is sizing the graphic. Step number three is converting all the objects to stitches, okay? Now, I do not have to convert this to vector, even though I have a jagged super line right here on the edges, we still do not have to convert this to vector. We do, however, got to uh, simplify the coloration of the image. When we zoom in, we can see where the, where the black meets the pink, we have this lighter shade of pink, okay, which is further pixelation from the low resolution image. And we do have a tool in here that's called Reduce Color, and that's going to reduce all those lighter pixels out. So we click on this, and if I tell it to filter up to 32 colors, you can see it's only seeing two primary colors, okay? So it's not really seeing all those light pinks. So I'm just going to hit return, and there we go. If we wanted this to be something used for a vinyl cutter, we can then convert this to a vector simply by clicking on convert to vector. Click on filter first to preview your after effect from your before and then choose your transparent layer. Anything listed in here, and you can see there's our two colors, is going to be omitted once vector, vectorizing is done. So we have a black background, so that'll be gone, okay? If we needed to uh, use the black, say we have some black inside of the ribbon here, then we have the ability to say no transparent layer, and it'll keep both the black and the pink, and we could delete the black layer be, uh, 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 by itself, okay? But for this situation, we're just going to choose the black to be deleted. We hit vectorize, 
and now the image is a vector. Just that simple. Now when we look at those, those lines, they're nice and sharp and clean. Okay, no more jagged. I can now just send this right off to my cutter. And you do that through save. And you have send vector graphic to the cutter. What it'll do is you'll see this is what it's going to cut. And when you hit send, it'll bring up your, your, your uh, we, we have a graph tech in, in, in house here. It's not connected though. But it'll bring up a, a little control box uh, that is used by my graph tech for mirroring, for scaling, and for all these other settings, okay? Where we can actually uh, adjust to cut this on different, on different types of media and vinyl, okay? You could even include a cut frame to actually help you peel and uh, weed, your, weed your vinyl as well, okay? So for this now, we're going to convert this to stitches. Basically, it's very simple. Click on, uh, you're just going to click on your object. Well, first of all, I'm going to click on the color I intend it to be. And since pink is not in my color wheel here, we'll double click on it. And we'll choose on the wheel here, pink. And we'll dial in a pink color and hit OK. And now you can see the color is pink here. So if I click on the pink, click where the pink's going to go. We're going to click on Smart Design. Now, what Smart Design is, it's actually an automated feature that allows me to convert this graphic to any number of stitches, okay? If we wanted to outline this, uh, this uh, ribbon with a satin stitch, we can click on Zigzag, and you can see what it did. It just outlined it with a satin stitch, okay? We removed the vector, and there's my stitches, okay? Let's undo that. Let's go back, turn on my vector again. If we want an E stitch, which is a simulated uh, um, applique stitch, you can see that's what it's going to do, okay? We are going to go to a programmable stitch. It's kind of fun. It's kind of like a souped up kind of uh, E stitch, uh, but there's several different ways, uh, several different programmable stitches, which we'll cover in just a little bit. But you can see that just converts it right over real nice, okay? Um, then we have a zigzag stitch. Uh, we're going to use a fill stitch here on this graphic. Okay, so let me go ahead and undo. And we're going to do a fill stitch in here, which is one of my favorite type of stitches to use. And what we have now, I'm going to turn off the vector. Okay. What we have now here is a, a fill stitch, okay? And then we can actually change the color to the pink that we chose before. And we can actually tell the stitches to, instead of sewing straight across, that we want to put a slight angle to it so it captures light better. And the stitches will change to that direction automatically. Okay? If we want to put a border on this, we can click on border. And then just turn, uh, turn on a border. Now we have a border to our stitches. We could change the color of the border right from the, the, the tool itself. And maybe we want to do a light blue. And uh, we could set our density here to how many stitches per millimeter, which you'll learn in, in training, and how wide it's going to be. If I set this to 12, you can see that it actually shrinks down the thickness of that, of that border, okay? We could separate the border and have two images. So I can, when I do that, I could then click and remove the border from the image. And now we have two images, okay? So as you can see, converting to stitches is very, very simple, okay? Also with the software, what makes it a very valuable software is most softwares will only give you this default fill pattern where it's just like coloring in, a, in the lines in a coloring book where you just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth till it's all full. Well, with this software here, you're going to get a myriad of different fill type patterns, some with motifs in them, some with the different needle out looks to them, and they're, they're all right here. So if I, want like a, if I want a decorative pattern with it, like a zigzag pattern, just click on it, click on OK at the bottom of the screen. And you'll see that'll take place. See, now we have a zigzag pattern. By the way, when you do change your stitch direction, the whole look of the graphic changes because light reflects off a of polyester core thread. Okay? You have, uh, in this software, you have math patterns, okay? And you can see them la labeled right there. You have the ability to purchase other patterns when needed uh, just by simply clicking on the pattern you want. It'll take you to their website where you can add these patterns on to your library. You have creative patterns. Creative patterns are like a, even a more souped up decorative pattern fill that you have. If you want brick, you can click on a brick look to it and it will sign the brick. Just that simple, okay? 
you have manual patterns, and these are like a needle out. And most people, if you lived in the 80s, probably had a herringbone weaved, woven uh, uh, polo shirt. Well, this is a, that's called a needle out procedure that's done on that kind of weave, and these simulate that very well. So if you want a softened texture to it, uh, you can actually choose one of these. And then the combined patterns takes a combination of math patterns or creative patterns and math patterns and makes decorative motifs within the embellishment of the embroidery. So if I click on, let's see if I want to click on this here, you'll see you'll have this type of motif embedded into it. And you can see that's a powerful tool because not, not every software, digitizing software, has that many fill patterns in them. Okay? So that's, that's an added, uh, added effect. You also have some real cool things where you can do a randomization of stitches. When I click on randomize stitches, we could put like a tattered look to this or a distressed look to it. And uh, we'll just wait for that to take place. And let me go to, let me uh, set the random to a little bit better. There we go. So now we have this tattered look to our to our uh, stitches here, which is really cool. And you can increase or decrease the amount of randomization you have. By increasing the, the number here, we'll come 50% into the body of the stitches there to actually make this even more distressed, okay? And this adds a little bit more detail. You also have variable density, which gives you a gradient type look to your image. Uh, you have uh, like a, de a thin density here to thick density from one side to the other. And then you have the, de the low density in the middle. So if you're trying to look at, make it look like cylindrical, you could choose one of these things. I'm going to turn off my random off. Okay. There we go. And you can see how the, the stitches got real light here in the middle. Okay. When we change the background color to, oh, to black, you'll probably see a little bit better. Let me control the mouse a little bit. And you can see those lighter stitches in the middle. Uh, you get those, those, uh, this here, then you get, you get a different type of gradient on this second uh, section. And then you start to get into the multiple colors here. And I could choose a multiple colored ribbon uh, just like this, okay? And then over here, where the area pattern is in the body, you could change and edit the colors that you want. So for instance, the colors are the 21st color in the group, which is the pink and then the 22nd and 23rd. You can change these out. I'm going to go ahead and go to yellow. And, oh, yellow, and then we'll go to a red. And then we'll put a blue right in the middle, or purple. And you can see what we got there, okay? We have a totally different look to our image, okay? And again, changing the stitch direction always changes the look of your embroidery. Uh, I always tell people to, to, to adjust this because it could put you, you over the top from your competition. You, can everybody hear me? Uh, apparently, Rochelle, can you hear me uh, still? Okay. I, I, can everybody hear me okay? Uh, hello? Yeah, yeah okay. My, um, my sound check's good. Yeah, okay. So uh, it, it may be going out and, and, and out uh, like that. I think the batteries may be, may be just going, uh, awesome. going bad. How about we... Um uh, I was looking at the time here. How about we move on to yeah, let me go. section of the software? Yeah, let me go here. Let me turn on my vector. By the way, if you can convert things that easy to stitches, the same thing is true for converting it to rhinestones. Okay? So, all right, so what I'm going to do is with the same ribbon, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and go to Hotfix now. And uh, I'm going to go to my bead bar, and I'm going to choose uh, what stones I want to use. So in the software, we have rhinestones. Okay, and we have rind studs of every type. We have nail heads, okay, of different shapes, different colors. We have sequin. If you're a sequin operator, you can actually add sequin to it. And of course, we have spangles, okay. Now, spangle is a different decorative element that uh, it's kind of like a sequin, but without the hole in the middle. And uh, all, all, your, all your sequins are right here. You've got many colors here. We're going to go ahead and go to rhinestones, and I'm going to go to standard round, and I'm going to choose my stone size. And then I'll navigate to the color I want. I'm going to do a light amethyst and add it to my bead bar. I'm also going to go to a black. Uh, I'm going to go to a clear. Uh, let me go to SS. Uh, yeah, let me go to an SS10 clear, and I'll add that to my bead bar. Now to convert this to to the rhinestones, all I got to do again is click on my graphic, click on Smart Design. If you have Hotfix error, you'll go to Hotfix and you'll choose one of the types. One of the four types or five types of fill type patterns you got. 
there it is. Now the tools we have within here is bead spacing. Of course, if we decrease this number, we get more stones. Uh, if we increase the number, we get less stones, okay, and but a little bit more spacing in between. You also have this margin when actually, which will actually trap the color within the color barrier right there, okay. And we also have what's called a, a hexagon fill, which will fill it up even more. I'm just going to use radio fill, and again, we're going to add a border to this. So I'm going to click on the color that I want to be the border, click on my object, and then click on border and just simply turn on the border, okay. And there's our border color. Now the nice thing about this software, if I want to be a little bit more, uh, uh, a little bit more decorative with it, uh, on the border, uh, let me go separate border. Okay, so now I'm going to go to body. And what you're going to have is you have this multi-fill border where it's going to use diff two different color stones. And I don't have the stones in there, so I'm going to go ahead and there's my bead list. This stone here, I'm going to add a bead and I want it to be cobalt, I'm going to add it, and now what you have is you have a multicolor outline border. The last step of the, of the software is actually solving overlaps. Wherever color meets color, you're always going to have some overlaps. You can see those amethyst stones peeking out from there. So we're going to solve overlap, it finds them, and we solve it. And now they're all gone. Now we just got to send this to the machine, and the machine will take care of the rest of it for us. Now, if you have a rhinestone design, okay, let me just turn off my hotfix, turn on my vector, and let's say I needed a graphic, okay, the, and I just acquired a, a cutter, and I want this to be able to cut on vinyl. Maybe my intention is not to have any fill, but to have the vinyl in the middle, like a glitter vinyl, and outlined with those decorative stones. We could do that very simple. I'm just going to change this back to a solid fill, all right, and I'm going to delete. Uh, actually, I'm going to click on my, my, uh, my ribbon. If you right-click, you can convert this object to a vector. And now we have a vector, a vector again. So I'm going to turn off the hotfix. And there's my vector outline. I don't want that part. Let me see. I actually wanted the inside part. So I'm going to click on the fill. That's the one we want to vectorize. Okay. Now we have a true vector. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this uh, fill area. And now what we have is we have this vinyl piece that's actually going to cut. So I basically do this. I file. I go to a send graphic to cutter. It sends the, the cut file to the cutter. That cuts out. I heat press that first. And I'm also, if you're brush and bake enthusiasts, you can actually take your rhinestones and export the template stencil as HPGL. And uh, I have overlaps. And what it's going to do, it's going to cut all your stones that you need to brush and bake in. And my overlap is very, uh, very bad. I mean, I'm, yeah. I set this up for an automatic machine. Usually my gap on this would be about 14, beads, uh, 14 on the bead spacing. Okay. N another nice, uh, is Hotfix an option you have to buy extra? Um, is Hotfix, the only extras that come that you can buy with Hotfix is actually the types of fills that you have. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different ways of converting this graphic to a, uh, to a filled product. The texture gives me a little bit more of a textured product in inside there. You'll see it in, in just a second. Let me go ahead and click on it. Hold on. And while you're doing that, also, um, if you own Liberty, then you don't have Hotfix. And if you own Hotfix, you don't have Liberty. That's right. However, if you do both, or you're looking to do both, then you can add on. If you have one, you can add on the other. Um, or, of course, at initial time of purchase, you can purchase both combinations together. But they are Hotfix Era and Liberty are two different pieces of software. But when you end up owning them both, they end up combining together into one suite that you see up there. So if you have Hotfix, you won't see the embroidery tab. If you have embroidery, you wouldn't see the Hotfix tab. So you can see what that texture does. You can get some real cool dynamic looks from that texture, from that texture base, okay? Really cool. Drivers are extra drivers to communicate with your cutter or with your rhinestone machines uh, will be extra. I'm not sure how much that is, but I think you can go to our website or... or, or yeah, or and just, you would just give a call if, for whatever add-ons you're looking to do because 
it's, I guess you look at it two ways. Either depending on the different drivers you have would be extra, or if you don't need a full version, you also don't have to pay for a full version. That's correct. So if you have a designer uh, that just does design work, like we have folks here that only do design work, they only pay for what they're going to use for. So you're only going to pay for the design portion of it. If you're going to send it to a machine, then you would actually pay for the communication software as well. So with all of this software, you buy only what you need, essentially. That's correct. That's correct. Text is the same way. The text is very simple to use. You, you have full power over it to change text uh, colors to anything you want. Uh, even uh, single line text, you can actually choose from, a, uh, from the 10 different basic fonts here. Or you can use true type fonts that are in your folder, Windows folder, to use as, as, uh, as text in here as well. So you just simply click on, type in what you want to say, and it comes right in. And there is a spell checker with it. There's a lot more that the software can do. Uh, 25, 30 minutes is not enough. Definitely two hours is not enough to show you what you, uh, wh what you can do with the software. But as long as you understand that you don't need another graphic software to actually use and edit graphics in here, you can convert to um, any kind of graphic you bring into a vector. You can actually send those vectors off to your cutter or to your rhinestone machine after converting to stones or to your spangle machine. I appreciate your attention, and I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to Mark again. Sure, sure. And th well, thanks. That was actually yep. really awesome. I learned a couple things, too. Um, so, yeah, just the last things to mention um, when, we're taught, when Alan was mentioning the creativity in this. So some folks are looking for a way to maybe um, reduce the amount of stones in a design uh, but increase the bling in it, you know, because, or they have a more detailed lettering they need to do uh, that doesn't necessarily work with rhinestone. So this is a way that you can take one piece of software and easily have both of them together on the screen visually, send one to your cutter and one over to your spangle machine or your rhinestone machine. Um, you can do the same with embroidery. So if you are looking to do applique, you can use your cutter to cut a uh, twill material and then you can drop your embroidery right on top of that. And you don't have to do all the guesswork and the math in two different pieces of software and assume that everything is going to be okay in the end um, or assume that you're good enough at doing the math and adding it all up, including the little details of actually dropping a rhinestone border that's exactly the right size over a piece of vinyl. Um, and also just switching back between. So if you're going to do men's, if, it, if you're going to do this design, say for example, right here, um, and you have got men's shirts, you've got youth shirts, you've got ladies shirts, right? And the group you're working with has asked the ladies to be bling, the men's to be a flat color, nice and vinyl, and then the children's to be embroidery, right? Well, this software allows you to make all of those designs literally together, save them as one file and you can have all of it together, and then you can combine or all however you want to do it. You can save the individual colors of each. So maybe the men's shirts you were doing in the red, white, and blue, but the ladies' shirts you incorporated some rose-colored stones into. Uh, and then the children you used metallic thread. You know, there's so much you could do and putting it all together that, uh, as Alan said, you could, we could spend two hours talking about this software and still go into more interesting things. Um, within it. So what I encourage you to do is if you want to see some detailed stuff, go back to the web page that, that I showed you before on ColemanandCompany.com and uh, click on design software. Okay. If, you if you're in embroidery now or you're in rhinestones and you've been thinking about the idea of getting into a cutter um, and you already have this software, then you are in a fantastic place because all you need to do is add on the cutter. If you click on heat transfer supplies, it'll take you to the cutter and heat presses and vinyls and such. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah, um, I am recording this webinar right now, so we plan on posting it, absolutely. Um, and if you do want to see more on these individual pieces of software, you can watch these tech talks that we did, and they'll really dive into the both sides of the software. And you can also jump on our YouTube page too. Um, when we post the webinar, we will shoot an email out. Also, if you go to our webinar page, on the top here, you'll see recorded webinars for Coldesi and Coleman and Company. That's where we drop them. So you can click on there and you will see a bunch of webinars that we've recorded in the past. 
So if you want to do embroidery and rhinestones, can you do both with this software? Uh, yes, that's what we were showing you. We were using the same software to create the embroidery design that he did and to create the hotfix design that he did. Um, and if I just go back to it really quick. Yeah, let me show you real quick. Yeah, add, add an embroidery to that really quick. Let me go ahead and show you what, uh, how to do that. Uh, let me just get rid of all this and uh, we'll just get rid of the rhinestone part. And I'll show you how easy it is, okay? Here's the vector, okay? Just simply click on the vector after you cleaned it and then go ahead and convert it to stitches, okay? And go to embroidery. I'm going to choose a fill pattern. There's the fill pattern. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the fill pattern, okay? Click on the graphic again. I'm going to go to Hotfix and add a path line to it. There's my rhinestone, so I'm going to turn off the vector, turn on my embroidery, and there you have your mixed media. Okay? One would be exported to your cutter, uh, uh, or yeah, your cutter to cut the brush and bake, or your machine, and the other to your embroidery machine. Yeah, and then you can, you can for, yeah, exactly, just as you said, you can send it to the cutter or your rhinestone machine, or your spangle machine, or both. You know, you could actually do rhinestones and spangles, and vinyl, and an applique, and embroidery in one piece of artwork all together if you really wanted to get creative and spend an hour and a half making, you know, one, one t-shirt. You could do it and it would look amazing and you could do it on all one, one piece of software. Uh, so, a uh, couple other things to mention. If you do have this software already and you're a Coleman & Company customer, I'm going to encourage you to, um, if you're a Spangle customer, click on Spangle Supplies. And there is a, uh, an add-on service pack that you can add on to this software. So if you're a Spangle customer, add on the service pack, and it will include some additional covers. Um, if you do not have the drivers but you need the additional drivers, what we can do is we can verify uh, with you that you do not have them. If you do have them, then it's a communication issue that we can handle after that, but there's ways we can verify. Just give us a call in Coleman and Company in the morning and we'll help you out. Uh, and then how much is the software is the question. Click on design software here and you can actually follow through the options that we have, okay? So we've got a subscription-based version of this software which is much lighter and only embroidery, nothing else. Then we've got uh, the Liberty version of the software, which is $9.49. And then we've got uh, the Rhinestone version of the software, and the Cutter version is $5.99. And we can also combine and remove and mess around all of the different combinations. So the price that you see there are our most popular ones, but if you say, hey, I want just for this, and I want rhinestone design only, and I want to be able to do Liberty, we can put that combination for you. If you want to be able to do rhinestone and spangle and cutter all together, we can do that for you as well. So just call us, let us know your wish list, and then we'll put together the price package that's right for you, because as I mentioned, there is not just one combination, um, and depending on which, which combos you're getting, you can sometimes get a better deal. So just call, and that's how we'll get you. And either way, we'll get you the best deal we can. So hopefully you guys learned some cool stuff and you got to see some cool things. We're, got, we're getting ready to log off. Uh, if you have any additional questions, just give us a call. Uh, if at Coleman & Company, if we can't answer it, if we need a technician to get in there to really get into, um, or Alan or something, we can get you know, deep into the software. If it's a basic question, we can probably answer it right on the phone immediately. So thanks, everybody, for watching. And we look forward to seeing you at the next webinar.